reactions. They happen, people don't like talking about them. If you're doing male intimate waxing, you cannot do a career in male intimate waxing and expect to never encounter an erection. Um, it doesn't mean that your client is, is getting off on the treatment. It doesn't mean that they're there for the wrong reasons necessarily. Um, some people are just incredibly nervous. They're lying there naked. The wax feels warm when it goes on. So sometimes things can pop up and say hello. They usually disappear when you take the first strip of wax off but not always. So what I normally do is just completely ignore the situation. Things normally go away on their own. Now obviously if your client is lying there and they apologize because some clients do, you know, the last thing they want is to be lying there with an erection in a professional situation. So some clients do apologize and you just have to say, don't worry, it happens. Just acknowledge it and normally then that puts their mind at rest. Another really exciting thing that happens to you as a waxer is having a little bit of a poo bum puller on your couch. I always give my clients a um, an intimate wipe to use before their treatment, but I suppose there is the odd time where they don't clean properly, or maybe they might have a little bit of a, a little bit of a wet trunk um, and end up with a little bit of the brown stuff when you're waxing the bottom crack. So. How do we deal with this? Well, I'm afraid you just gotta not suck it up because that's the wrong word, but you've just gotta deal with it. Just get some either some cleanser on a cotton pad or a, a bit of tissue or whatever and just wipe it away. So when I first started out in the industry when I was 17, I um, had a client in for a pedicure and for an eyebrow wax. So I decided to do the eyebrow wax first. She had come off a particular medication which was for treating acne. And um, if you know much about that, any kind of medication that treats acne thins the skin. But I didn't know masses about it at the time, neither did my clients. So I did a full consultation with her. She told me she was off this particular medication for two weeks. So I thought, well, that should be fine. Um, waxed her, completely skinned her. Um, on both brows and in the middle and she was so upset she just burst into tears on me and I was like oh my god I felt so bad luckily I bumped into her a few weeks later and, and her skin was okay but for me it was a lack of knowledge if you're ever unsure about any medications ask another colleague just don't get into that situation I had a client in for a full back sack and crack this was very early on in my career, so many, many years ago, I had him up on the table, on his knees, down in his elbows, putting the wax onto his bum cheek, uh, go to pull the first strip off, and the poor guy wasn't expecting it, jolted forward on the table, and me with visions of him flying off the end of the table, smacking his head on the wall, did what any self-respecting therapist would do, and rugby tackled him around the back of his legs. And there was a moment where my cheek and his cheek connected still with wax on his buttocks and I was stuck to his bum basically and I had a vision that my career would be in tatters I thought he's either gonna laugh or he's gonna sue me and fortunately he laughed but what that did do is it made me realize the importance of explaining things to clients we do this all day every day as waxers and but first time clients in particular don't know any of that so make sure you explain it to your clients before you start the treatment I had an Asian bridal party in for a pre-wedding wax and one of the girls was unfortunately on her period. She she told me kind of discreetly that she wasn't able to use Tampax and could I still wax her. She wanted a full wax so we had to kind of take everything off. Um, but we just put her on the couch, I made sure she got extra tissue just to make sure she was nice and fresh. And usually as well when your clients are laid down nothing really comes out. So um, it was very clean wax anyway. So I suppose that the bit of advice I've got is to just say yes to most things that your clients need and work around it. It's just normal, isn't it? It's part of being a woman. Let's talk strange smells and odd odors. You know, it happens. We work with human bodies. Uh, a massage therapist a long time ago taught me a very clever trick involving Vicks Vapor Rub. And all you do is get a little pinch of Vicks Vapor Rub underneath your nose like so, and then all you'll smell for the next 20 minutes is the heady waft of eucalyptus and menthol. However, I did have one client who I kept using this trick so much that he thought I had a permanent cold and one day brought it up in the treatment. So again, that made me realize that actually 
sometimes you need to tackle the situation head on. But if somebody keeps coming back and they have strong body odour uh, or they're unclean, then sometimes you just need to take them aside at the end of the treatment, give them a washcloth, you give them your antibacterial shower gel, tea tree shower gel, and you say to your clients, I want you to take these home with you. A couple of times a week in the bath or shower, squirt some of this onto this, give yourself a good scrub in the bath or shower all over, get into all of those nooks and crannies everywhere that we've waxed today and use it on the day of your appointment. It's gonna make your waxing easier.